Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hope you all are fine. I am doctor and I welcome everyone in doctor potential. Today we are going to discuss about the forceps used for mandibular arch. If you remember in the last video of extraction we already discussed about the maxillary arch forceps in detail. Link is given in the i card above. As for now we are going to cover forceps for the extraction of mandibular arch. This time it will be easy for everyone to understand the types, techniques and movement required for extraction. Let's get into the video. Just have a quick review of what is extraction forceps. It is the forceps used for removing the tooth from the alveolar bone. The indications, contraindications and how to manage the patient is already we have discussed. The components of forceps are beak, hinge and handle. And I am sure you all remember the what are the function of these components. According to the beak of forceps, the mandibular forceps also divided into three types. Anterior teeth, premolars and molars and also for the root forceps. Mandibular anterior teeth forceps. Mandibular anterior teeth include incisors up to the canine. The most commonly used forceps is the lower universal forceps. The number of the lower universal forceps is num 151. The beaks are smooth and narrow and meet only at the tip. This will allow the beak to fit the near the cervical line of the tooth to grasp the root. It is necessary that the beak of the uh, forceps always grasping the root. Beaks of the mandibular forceps are always at the right angle to the handle. To get the better fit, to get the better grasp and the grip to the root by the operator. The number 151 forceps can also be used for the extraction of the broken down root in the lower arch. The question arises how to grip the mandibular forceps. Always remember that beak of the forceps always should be parallel to the long axis of tooth. So hold the forceps in such a way that palm should be on the top of the forceps and beak is pointed downward. If we want to deliver great amount of force for the rotational movement, it can be achieved when we move the thumb around and under the handle. So we can get the better grip to exert great amount of forces to extract the teeth. Now we are going to discuss about the chair position of patient and the position of the operator to extract the mandibular teeth. For the extraction of the mandibular teeth, the patient should be positioned in more upright position. In the upright position, when the mouth is opened wide, the occlusal plane is parallel to the floor. If the patient cannot open the white mouth, we can also use the bite block. The advantage of the bite block is less stress being transmitted to the jaws and allows the patient to rest their muscles of mastication and allow the operator to have a wide access and better visibility. For the extraction of the mandibular premolars, the forcep used is the slight modification of number 151 forcep known as number 151A. In this forcep, there is a slight gap between the beaks. This gap is for better encourage to the roots and better accessibility. The beaks of this forcep is identical, long and broad with slight gap because the roots of the mandibular premolars is wider buccolingually. The grip for the forcep of the mandibular premolars is same as for the mandibular anteriors. As shown in this diagram that the number 151A forcep adopted to a lower premolar tooth. The chair position is also same as for the anteriors but when we extracting the right mandibular teeth in the posterior quadrant the patient had slightly turned acutely to the uh, operator so the operator get better access to the tooth. Another important consideration in the mandibular extraction is to retract the cheek and to stabilize the mandible 
as shown in this diagram that the operator's passive hand thumb is retracting the cheek while the fingers is stabilizing and supporting the mandible. If the patient comes for the extraction of the mandibular molars, mandibular molars are bifurcated two rooted teeth that allow the use of forceps that anatomically adopt to the tooth. Because the bifurcation on the buccal and the lingual sides only, that so we don't have to use different forceps for the right and the left arch as required in the maxillary arch. The lower molar forcep is number 17 forcep. These forceps are usually straight handled and the beaks are set obliquely downward. If we uh, have a close look on the beak, the beaks have pointed tips in the center to be set into the bifurcation of the lower molar teeth. The remainder of the beak adopts well to the sides of the furcation. The most important consideration for the extraction of the mandibular molar is the close adaptation of the tips and the pointed tips of the beak to the furcation. The more close the beak is to the furcation, the more easy to grip the tooth to luxate the tooth and to fi and finally extract the tooth. The height of the chair for the procedure of the mandible should be slightly below the surgeon's elbow. The surgeon should be at 11 o'clock position. If needed, the patient head is slightly turned towards the operator or surgeon to get better access and visibility. Coming towards our main topic, what should be the technique for the extraction of the tooth? how we use the passive hand for, uh, for the retraction of the soft tissues and what should be the movements given by the forceps to luxate the tooth. For the extraction of the mandibular anteriors, we remember that the forceps used its number 151 forceps which is the universal forceps. The shape of the mandibular incisor and canine is same with having single roots. As we remember the root morphology of the incisor, that the roots are thin and the chances of fracture is more. So, before engaging the forcep, there must be adequate luxation. The forcep beaks are positioned on teeth as apical as possible with slight apical force. The extraction movements are generally in the labial and lingual direction, equal on both directions because the alveolar bone that overlies incisor and canine is thin on labial and lingual sides. The movement given in the sequence of labial, lingual, slight mesial and distal, rotational and tectional force given in the labial direction. For the retraction of the soft tissue, either the assistant retracts the patient cheeks and provides suction or the dentist using his passive hands to retract the lips and cheeks and support the mandible. Now come to the technique for the extraction of mandibular premolars. Mandibular premolars or first and second bicuspid of the mandibular tends to be more straightforward teeth in the arch to extract. The roots tend to be more straight and con. The forcep used is mandibular 151A forcep. Engage the forcep as apical as possible with the basic movement directed toward the buccal aspect more than the lingual direction because the alveolar bone on the lingual side is more heavier than on the buccal side. Rotational force is applied to break all the pedial ligaments around the tooth. Rotation is applied only for the single rooted tooth, not for the maxillary premolars. Remember, Maxillary premolars has bifurcated root and if we apply rotational force then it will lead to the fracture of the roots. Finally, the tectional force is applied in the occlusobuccal direction. Occlusobuccal direction. To gain the better access and visibility, the hand behind the patient technique is used. The thumb of the passive hand is used to retract the cheek and fingers is used to stabilize the mandible. As we already know that the mandibular molars have two roots, with the roots of the first molar are widely divergent than those of the second molar. The forcep used for the mandibular molar is number 17. As we know that the small tip projection on both beaks 
to fit into the bifurcation of the tooth roots. Engage the forceps as apical as possible. The first force to be applied is in the apical direction. Then strong buccolingual motion is given to expand the tooth socket and allow the tooth to be delivered in the buccooclusal direction. No rotational movement is required. For the extraction of erupted mandibular third molars, which usually have fused conic roots, and the bifurcation is not present. The forcep used is number 222 forcep that have short beak right angle forcep. To gain the access and visibility for the mandibular posterior extraction, the, the thumb and the index finger of the passive hand is used to hold the arch intraorally. Well, the other three fingers support the mandible extraorally. This is all about the extraction of the mandibular teeth. I hope now you get all the concept that how you are going to choose the first step for extraction. Any queries or suggestion for my dental videos comment below. Every comment from you people makes my work easier. So now what are you waiting for? Subscribe my channel, hit the bell button and stay tuned till the next video. Hello, Fizz.